Hi and welcome to Swedish Plant Guys. This is part two out of a three-part series on water. Now we all know that we need to water our plants otherwise they will die of course but we need to know more about the functions within the plant and when and how to water to make our plants thrive. Now the three-part series is number one why do we water? Number two when do we water? And number three, how do we water? Now the most common question we get is how often should I water my plants? And it is impossible to answer that question because it is depending on quite a few factors. Now we're going to go through all of those factors, but know that now a schedule for when you water your plants can be a good thing to remind you that you need to water your plants. However, you cannot rely on a schedule because that schedule might change because of these factors. Now the first factor is of course what type of a plant you have. There is a huge difference in the way in which different species can handle water and how much water they need. For instance, there is a huge difference between this ficus plant here and this cc plant. The cc plant is actually a plant that handles drying up quite a lot. And when it dries up, we're actually stopping those chains of water that we spoke of in part one. The ficus, on the other hand, doesn't handle that as well. You need to have some moisture with the roots at all time. So the first factor is what type of a species you have. Now the second factor is the amount of foliage your plant has. Now, if you have the same species, it's quite simple. If you have a small plant or if you have a big plant, the bigger plant, the more the foliage, and the more evaporation or transpiration of water you have on that foliage. But also if you have two different species like this, it's the total amount of surface area that dictates how much water that is transpiring within the plant. Now these two could actually have the same total surface area. You have smaller leaves but more leaves bigger leaves, less leaves, but it's the total surface area that matters. So the third factor that affects when you should water or how often you should water your plants is of course what type of a soil you're using for your plants. Now different substrates and different soils can absorb different amounts of water. The problem with standard planting soil that we have here is that it actually absorbs too much water for most indoor tropical plants. But what you can do is that you can mix your standard planting soil with other substrates to get that perfect balance and get good drainage. So what you can mix your standard planting soil is either pumice like we have here, leica pebbles you have here and perlite or perlites like you have here. Now a good mixture is to use around 70 to 80 percent of standard planting soil and mix in either pumice, leica or perlite for 20 to 30 percent. That is a good mixture that will get you good drainage. Now the fourth factor is if you use a closed pot or a pot that has drainage holes. What I mean by that, that this is a closed pot. There are no holes in this pot. So if I plant it directly into this pot, it means that when I water here, the water has nowhere to go. It will sit down in the bottom of the pot and eventually the soil will soak up too much water. What we recommend is that you use a pot that has drainage holes. Now this is drainage holes simply holes in the bottom of the pot. Because when I water my plant here, 
the excess water will go out from the bottom of the pot and you can throw that away because what you want is the water that is absorbed by the soil. And if you have a soil that has a good mixture and holds the right amount of water, then you have a higher success rate. Now, the fifth factor is the size of the pot you've planted in. If I am going to repot this plant here, I would never put this in this size of a pot because this is too big. I would put it in maybe something like this. Now, what's the difference? Because if we planted it in this pot, you have much more soil inside of this pot. And that soil will be moist or wet for a longer period of time than it will inside of the smaller pot. And that could potentially harm the roots of your plant. So when we repot, we always go up one size, never many sizes, because you could potentially harm the roots of your plant. Now, the sixth and final factor is the environment in your home. One of the reasons we cannot answer how often you should water is because we don't know how it looks in your home and the environment in your home. Now, there are different factors within, within that, of course. You have temperature, for instance. If you have 18 degrees Celsius or if you have 25 degrees Celsius in your home, that will, of course, affect how often you should water your plants. Another factor within that is also, is your plant placed somewhere where it gets direct sunlight? Or is it placed somewhere further into the room where it gets almost no sunlight or no light at all? That will also affect how often and how much water you should give your plants. Another factor is, of course, the humidity in your home. Now, here in Sweden, we have really low humidity in wintertime in our homes. And where you live, you might not have that. And there is a huge difference with how often I should water depending on how high humidity you have. Because that humidity will affect the transpiration that we talked about in part one. If you have low humidity, the transpiration will be quite high. If you have high humidity, the transpiration will be lower. So that will depend on how often you need to water your plants. Now, another factor is, of course, drafts. Let's say you have an open window uh, that is next to your plant, or if you have an old window that creates drafts, that will also affect on how often you need to water and how much you need to water. Different seasons also affect how often and how much you need to water your plants. For instance, in winter, most indoor tropical plants go a little bit dormant. Now, if you want to know more about what dormancy is, we have a video you can go and watch. But what it basically means is that you will not have to water as much in the wintertime because it's not active. On the other hand, when spring arrives, it's time to start growing. And when the plant is growing, it needs water. As we said in part one of this series, we need water to grow. We need water to create the food, to create the new growth material, to create the new leaves. And also, when a new leaf comes out of the plant, it doesn't have a cuticle. Now, what is that? Well, the cuticle is actually that shiny part of the leaf. That shiny part of the leaf it is there to hinder that a lot of water evaporates from the leaves. But a new leaf doesn't have that. So that also affects on how often you need to water your plants. If it's growing, it needs more water. And of course, in the middle of summer, you have high heat, high humidity. All of the energy of the plant is just going to keep the plant cool. You have that transport system of water all the time to cool the plant. And in autumn, you have a growth period again. Usually, it's not a growth period in the foliage. It's a growth period in the roots to prepare the plant for winter. But you have a growth period, and that means that you might have to water a little bit more.
Now, if you live somewhere in the world where you don't have seasons like we have here up in Sweden, then your plants will be affected anyway. For instance, in summer you have a longer light period during the day than you have in wintertime. So seasons do matter. Now, if the most common question was, how often should I water my plants? Or how much water should I give to my plants? Well, the answer we usually give is you should let the soil dry up a little bit in between waterings. Now, why is that and what does that mean? Well, the reason is quite simple. For the roots to function properly, and we need the roots to function properly to be able to keep that chain of water within the plant at all times. If the roots stop functioning, that will not happen and you will kill your plants. So, to keep the roots happy, you need a balance of water and oxygen. If you give too much water, you will not have enough oxygen. And that balance is shifted. The roots will stop to function. Now, on the other hand, if you're not giving your plants enough water, you will have too much oxygen and not enough water. And the roots will stop to function. So, the same thing happens. You will get problems with your plants. But by keeping that balance of water and oxygen, you're keeping the roots happy. And one way of doing that is to make sure that the soil dries up a little bit in between watering. And the easiest way of knowing this is to feel the soil. Now, we usually say that you should feel the top of the soil or down into the soil at least two and a half to five centimeters or one to two inches. When you feel that the soil is starting to dry up, then it's time to water again. So next up, signs and indications. Now, even if you think that you have all of those factors in, in check, you need to look at your plants because they are probably showing you, giving you signs or indications that something is wrong or if it's thriving and you're doing everything right. Now, what can those signs and indications be? Well, first off, we need to look at the soil again. Because like we said before, you need to water your plants when the soil is starting to dry up. Now, depending on what species you have, some plants, like the CC plant here, it can actually dry up completely, or it wants to dry up completely. It should be dry, bone dry, all the way down to the bottom of the pot before you give it water again. But some plants, like this Schefflera here, actually doesn't want that. It needs to be, if not wet all the time, it needs to be a little bit moist all the time. So find out what your species, what the science for your species needs to be. Another sign you can look for is, of course, that your plant is not starting to droop or starting to hang, because that is an indication that it needs more water or that it has gotten too much water. Feel the soil to know which one of it, it is, of course. But if you see that it's starting to droop, another thing can also be that the older leaves are starting to become brown. And what I mean by brown is this dry brown. You can hear it crackling when I touch it. There is no water inside of these leaves. That is also an indication that you need to start watering more or perhaps more frequently. Another indication can also be that the leaves of your plant are starting to become yellow or starting to become a little bit shaded, so yellowish in color. That could also be an indication that you need to watch your watering. Another sign can be that the leaves of your plant is just starting to drop off. They're still green, but they're dropping off of your plant. Usually, it is the older leaves that drop first. That is an indication that you have watered too much because the pressure inside of the plant is too high. So it starts to knock off the leaves without ever turning brown or yellow or anything. They just drop off green. That is also a sign to look for. Another sign is also 
by taking a look at the top of the soil. If you feel a distinctive mold smell or that it doesn't smell like soil, it has a distinctive nasty smell to it. You've probably watered too much and you've gotten something called root rot. Uh, another indication can also be that on top of the soil you get some white fluff, some white mold almost looks like. What that is is usually a salt deposit. If you've given too much fertilizer or if your water has too much minerals in it, what can happen over time is that that will deposit on top of the soil here. That is also an indication that you might need to change the frequency of your watering. Now you understand why someone can't just tell you how often you should water your plants or how much you should give your plants. Because there are a ton of factors and a ton of signs that your plant might be showing you that will affect how often and how much you should water your plants. Now in the next part of this series we will be showing you how to water your plants because that is actually really important and not as easy as you might think. Now, If you like the video please give it a thumbs up that really helps our channel a lot. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet please do hit the bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram where you get sneak previews on upcoming videos and sometimes a little bit more. Now until next time, Haido!